I'm now going to show you a more general method for solving optimization problems with constraints. And this is called Lagrange multipliers. And the way this works is that to minimize or maximize the function f of xy with the constraint g of xy equals k, you want to solve two equations. So the first equation is that the gradient of f is lambda times the gradient of g. So lambda is just some scalar. Um, lambda is a, a scalar, which is called a Lagrange multiplier. And also, we have to make sure we're on the constraint set, so we have to solve g equals k. So the equations say that g of xy equals k, and also the gradient of f at our point is some scalar multiple of the gradient of g. It doesn't matter what the scalar is, as long as it's some scalar multiple. So you have to solve these two equations. And there's a little technical footnote, which is you also need to check where the gradient of g equals zero. So in other words, what we're saying is the following. So claim, suppose that xy minimizes or maximizes f subject to the constraint g of xy equals k. And suppose also that the gradient of g is not zero at this point. Then we must have the gradient of f at xy equals some scalar lambda times the gradient of g at xy. So let me try to explain why this is true. So here's the, here's the level set g equals k. And remember, the condition that the gradient is not equal to zero means that it's a smooth curve near the point xy. And here's our point xy. Okay, so let's let, let gamma um, be a parameterized curve. So it's, gamma depends on t. So parameterized curve on the level set, uh, g equals k, with gamma of 0 equals xy. OK. Now, since we're maximizing the constraint, maximizing or minimizing f with a constraint, um, so since xy is optimal, optimal could mean minimum or maximum here, we must have that d dt at t equals 0 of f of gamma of t equals 0. Because if this derivative were not 0, then that would mean that we could either increase or decrease t a little bit and make f a little bigger or a little smaller, so it could not be a minimum or a maximum. Right? This is assuming, by the way, that we're not on the boundary of the domain. OK, so we must have this equation. Now remember, the chain rule tells us that this expression is the gradient of f at the point xy dot product with gamma prime of 0. OK, now on the other hand, 
Okay, so so the so here's gamma prime. This is gamma prime of zero, this vector here, and it's perpendicular to the gradient of f. But we also know that g of gamma of t equals k for all t, because we're on the level set after all. Okay, so that means that d dt at t equals zero of g of gamma of t has to equal zero, because this is the derivative of the constant function k. But now this expression, again by the chain rule, is the gradient of g at x, y dot gamma prime of t. So the gradient of g also has to be perpendicular to gamma prime. And that means it has to point in the same direction as the gradient of f. Maybe it's a different length, but it's going to be parallel. So maybe this is the gradient of g. It could also point in the opposite direction, so lambda could be negative. Okay, so in other words, the gradient of f has to be perpendicular to all tangent vectors to the level set. But the tangent vectors to the level set are those vectors which are perpendicular to the gradient of g. So the set of vectors that are perpendicular to the gradient of g has to be the same as the set of vectors that are perpendicular to the gradient of f. And that means that the gradient of f and the gradient of g have to point in the same direction. So let's do an example to see how this works in practice. So let's redo our example of the triangle. So we're going to maximize f of xy with the constraint, sorry, f of xy equals xy over 2 with the constraint g of xy. So I, well, I want the square root of x squared plus y squared to equal 10, but it's a little easier if we instead just say that x squared plus y squared equals 100. This will simplify the algebra a little bit. Okay, so we solve the equation gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. Now the gradient of f so first we have the partial with respect to x, which is y over 2. And then we have the partial with respect to y, which is x over 2. And the gradient of g is 2x comma 2y. So this Lagrange multiplier equation says that y over 2 comma x over 2 is some scalar lambda times 2x comma 2y. Now we can expand this equation in components so that tells us that y over 2 equals lambda times 2x and x over 2 equals lambda times 2y. Or to simplify this a little bit, this is y equals 4 lambda x and x equals 4 lambda y. Now, if I put the second equation here into the first one, then I get the equation y equals 16 lambda squared times y, which tells me that y times 1 minus 16 lambda squared equals 0. And so one of these factors has to be 0, so I get that y equals 0, or 16 lambda squared equals 1. Now, y equals 0 is really not going to work here, because we need to maximize this. And if y equals 0, f is going to be 0. And we know that f can be positive. So we can rule out this possibility. So we know that, the lambda, that 16 lambda squared equals 1. And then this tells us that lambda equals one-fourth, or lambda equals minus one-fourth. 
But again, we can rule out one of these cases by thinking about the problem, because remember, we're assuming that x and y are greater than or equal to zero. So I should have said this at the beginning. So the domain is we require x and y to be bigger than or equal to zero. So in particular, um, if lambda were negative, then because of this equation here relating x and y and lambda, one of x or y would have to be negative, and that's not allowed. So I can also rule out this case, and I've concluded that lambda equals one fourth. So in particular, if I put that back into these equations here, sorry, I'm sort of writing all over the place here. I should have been more organized. Anyway, when I plug that into these equations, I simply get that x equals y. Okay, And that's what I got from the first of the two equations. Remember, there are two equations I have to solve. The first equation I have to solve is that the gradient of f is lambda times the gradient of g. And that, after all this calculation, led me to x equals y. The second equation I have to solve is the constraint equation, that g equals 100. So I have to also solve g equals 100. So x squared plus y squared equals 100. And when I put in the fact that x equals y, I can write this as 2x squared equals 100. So I get x equals the square root of 50, or x equals minus the square root of 50. And x equals minus the square root of 50 is not allowed because that's not in the domain. So I get x equals the square root of 50. And then I can use the fact that x equals y to also write that y equals the square root of 50. So I got the same answer as before. Um, it's maybe about the same amount of work, but we'll see that for more complicated problems, these Lagrange multipliers are incredibly useful.